We are at the Stonehenge of Portugal. We are at a cork factory that is a short distance from Evra. This is only about a 25 minute drive. And we really wanted to know about how cork was produced because we keep seeing it on, in all the shops. And it turns out that cork trees are incredible. They are part of the same family as the oak tree. And what actually produces all of our cork wine bottle stoppers is the bark of the cork tree. It renews itself every nine years and a cork tree can live to be 220 years. Cork is harvested completely by hand from a tree. An ax, just like this one that I am very dangerously yielding, is used on the tree and they use the ax to come into the side to make sure they don't cut in too deeply so they don't kill the tree. And then they use the ax to go all the way down the tree on one side and then the other side and then they peel it off. And this is what it looks like. And watch this. It's not very heavy. I'm just kidding, it's really not heavy, it really isn't. Three months a year, only three months, April, May, and June, the cork is able to be, be peeled away safely from the tree without killing the tree. And then it's set aside to dry. And then it grows back underneath. As you can see in the tree that's beside me, you can see the old versus the new bark. This is one of the ultimate renewable resources that we have. And over 50% of the world's cork products come from right here in Portugal. And this is the center of the industry. It is said that when a cork tree is planted, it's planted for the grower's grandchildren. Why is that? Because not the first bark production, not the second bark production, but the third bark production is when the cork bark starts becoming of a quality that is of value. Now remember, we are harvesting cork every nine years. So that means 27 years before a cork tree produces value cork. What a long time to wait for a fantastic product. Speaking of fantastic product, behind me we have a bunch of cork that's drying. Let me show you how tall these stacks are. I'm five foot three. This has been harvested in the recent years and now it sits out here drying, waiting to go through the boiling process, which we're gonna take you through next. After the cork has dried, it's brought inside where it is boiled. Boiling the cork gets rid of impurities and dirt and bugs and also strengthens the product and flattens it out. They pile up the cork, which used to be curved as we saw outside. They pile up the cork and it'll end up four feet off of the boiling water here. And they'll use the press that's behind me to press the cork all the way down. And this structure goes down three meters underground, so about nine feet. And the cork sits there boiling for a couple of days and then it has to cool for four days before it's cool enough to even be touched. They just boiled this yesterday so it's steaming behind me and once they're able to touch it they'll bring it out and they'll separate it into pallets to be sold to their customers. Here's a fun fact. Because cork is so lightweight this is often used for explosions in Hollywood because nobody will get injured if it hits them in the head. It's also used for insulation. Cork wood can also be made into fabric, which is amazing. They take, they take blocks and they glue them together like this, and then they shave off the top 0.2 millimeters of depth. Then they take what they've shaved and they adhere it to a fabric backing and you have pliable, bendable, squishable cork fabric, which is also naturally weather resistant. Amazing. <laughs> like to thank Art in Cork Company for explaining the cork process to us and letting us film while we were there. If you are in the area, we would consider it a must do. You must learn about this fascinating product. And by the way, if you visit there, ask them about the oldest bull fighting ring in Portugal, which is located a few blocks from their factory and happens to be where I'm standing now. They also told us about 30 foot long snakes that are around here, so no. Just arrived at our next site and it is in the middle of a cork tree farm, I guess you'd call it. 
Also, Google says that this is as busy as it gets. There are five other cars in the parking lot and one is leaving right now. So we are at the Stonehenge of Portugal, except that this site predates Stonehenge by 2,000 years. It's that much older, it's amazing. Not only that, but if you visit Stonehenge, all you are able to do is look at it from a distance. And here, as you can see, I'm just meandering along all of these prehistoric stones that are six, seven, eight thousand years old. They don't know what these stones mean, just like they don't at Stonehenge, but they do face east and west in an oval pattern. So I don't know, your guess is as good as mine, internet.